Hello everyone. Today we want to bring you another episode of Orchids in Pop Culture. We had a lot of fun making this video last time, so we couldn't wait to do it again. Like we said last time, we took inspiration from our fellow YouTuber, Attainable Green. Because about a year ago, we watched them react to a Grey's Anatomy episode where a patient was an orchid grower. Turns out, they have more videos reacting to TV shows with orchids, so you should definitely check out their channel as well. Last time, we found a bunch of references to the ghost orchid. So we had a bit of a themed episode of Orchids in Pop Culture. But this time, we have a TV episode so full of orchid references, we'll be dedicating the whole video to it. This episode was suggested to us by Fernanda Nascimento, here on YouTube. And it was a great idea because we love murder mysteries. And this episode is all about orchids, a really rare thing. Midsummer Murders is a British TV show that started in 97, based on the Chief Inspector Barnaby book series by the writer Caroline Graham. It follows two police officers solving murders in the fictional English county of Midsummer, and it still airs to this day. We are going through the whole episode, so if you ever intend on watching it beyond this video, we do mention the reveal of the killer towards the end, and we'll give you a spoiler warning. In this episode, the main storyline starts with the smuggling of a unique orchid from the wild. Madeleine Villiers, a retired teacher and part-time smuggler, finds with her partner Jamie Fong a never-before-seen Paphiopetalum hochilianum flavum in the jungle of Mount Kinabalu in Borneo, where Paph rochilianum is actually from. They plan for Madeleine to smuggle the plant to England, with the plan to sell it to a private collector for £100,000. Now, with these videos, we aim to celebrate the fact that our beloved hobby is included in mainstream culture at all, and when it's done right. But of course, we have to have a little fun and also point out when these works of fiction go wrong. So, it is our job to point out that, although the flowers look like a decent imitation of what a flava or yellow version of Pat Rothschilianum would look like, the leaves look more like a modeled Pephiopetalum. Not the worst crap, for now. We also dug a little bit in the internet and couldn't find any examples of similar smuggling happening around this time. But we have serious doubts that they could find a private collector that would pay a hundred thousand pounds for a smuggled plant, let alone two in their own small little village, as we are going to see later. I understand why they picked Paphiopedlum rochellianum, since you can immediately find a bunch of articles online calling it one of the most expensive plants because it costs $5,000 per stem from smugglers? Where did these articles find that regurgitated information? I don't know. Because if you look for them for sale, they are a little bit pricey, but definitely are in cultivation and seem to have been for a good while. Twelve months go by, 
and hopefully the mottled yellow rod survived being stuffed on metal and spent for the trip. Who is now at her local orchid show, where the plants exhibited look like supermarket hybrids. Oh, we have that one. This gentleman is wearing white gloves to pretend to spray his American hybrid path, still in the nursery pot. Two supermarket orchid grape pots are going to be making a lot of appearances in the show. The winners of the show are announced, and the first prize goes to someone with a mini cymbidium, the second place to a Phalaenopsis follet, and the third to a Dendrobium nobili. They don't show the plants, and instead place the rosettes in the grower's lapel. We had to look up what a Phalaenopsis follet is, and it's a complex hybrid registered back in 93. That happened to have originated a lot of the hybrids we now see everywhere, who knew? The second and third placers are Munro Hillard, owner of the manor and white glove sprayer, and Henry Plummer, and they both seem very disgruntled by their placement. Later, during another session of gloved spraying, And surprise, Henry is the new owner of the Yellow Roth. His wife doesn't seem very happy about it, though. You're gonna ruin us, you know. How much did that one cost? It's priceless. Well, don't expect me back for breakfast. Later, Local handyman Harry Rose finds Madeline dead in her house. And this is where we meet our team of police officers that immediately break into her safe, finding a diary written in Latin. So the obvious solution is to get the local priest to translate for you. The priest translates some naughty encounters between Madeline and a mystery lover. And also immediately recognizes the Latin names of a list of orchids. Again with these high prices. These days, most Odontioda are very easy to find hybrids, but maybe in 2005 they were more special? Next, our investigators meet with Margaret Winstanley, a professor who had also judged the Orchid Show. The Orchid Greenhouse in the Faculty of Botany is the home of an old donated collection. But again, it's mostly common hybrids, this time with a lot more cymbidiums. Mm -hmm. 
One of the officers keeps sneezing from being in the orchid house. But fun fact, you actually can't have a pollen allergy from orchids. The pollen that they do have is very sticky and stays secured inside the flower until a pollinator arrives. They show the professor Madeline's diary slash accounting book and... This mention of Phragmopedium covaci makes me think this is the plant that inspired this whole episode. Just four years prior to this airing, Phragmopedium covaci was discovered by an orchid collector, being sold by the side of the road in Peru. He smuggled it into the United States and had the plant registered, only to be arrested after for the smuggling. The discovery made the plant be almost depleted from the wild due to the smugglers. So the solution was introducing it into cultivation. It's now still expensive, but in 2005, the 6,000 pounds would surprise me a lot less than the other prices being mentioned. Indeed, rare forms of Neophenicia falcata cost a pretty penny, especially in Japan where they are very appreciated, and each variety has its own special name. However, I don't know if in England in 2005 you would find a buyer for £50,000 for a variety that's just identified as variegated. Wow, the 100,000 pounds just turned into 150,000 pounds. Back at Henry's house, the current owner of the Yellow Roth, his wife wakes up to find him dead, hanging from the ceiling. When the detectives arrive, she shows them that his orchid collection has also been destroyed. So many grey supermarket pots everywhere. The addiction and competitiveness of the orchid hobby is a theme threaded in the whole episode. As someone who grows them just as a small hobbyist, I have to admit I'm no expert. But being involved in other hobbies and professions, I think any niche interest can become this toxic, competitive and greedy when people get involved in it for the wrong reasons. And that's pretty much human nature. Turns out, the yellow Roth was not destroyed with Henry's collection, but is now mysteriously with rich white glove sprayer Munro Hilliard, 
who also can't afford more than supermarket hybrids in his collection. Meanwhile, Jimmy Fong arrives in the village and is told by Harry, the handyman, that Madeline is dead and the orchid was sold. The officers also learned that Madeline died poisoned by hemlock. They go to speak with Monroe Hilliard, but he and the rest of the orchid society are patrolling a local area, where a monkey orchid has flowered for the first time in years to protect it from poachers. Of course, our young detective can't follow simple directions, so the worst happens. The model they use for this actually looks like Orchisemia, commonly known as the monkey orchid. It does grow in very specific areas of England, and it is rare. The idea of an orchid society taking shifts to protect this little terrestrial orchid is really cute. I don't know if in England it was common practice to poach these plants. Over here in Portugal, orchid species grow on the side of the road in some places and most people don't care. Some orchid lovers do pick them, even though most of us advise against it. But they are known to not do well outside of their natural environment. This concept that Henry was not a true orchidist because he bought his plants, rather than grow them himself. I don't understand where the show was going with this one. Most orchid lovers buy their orchids, I think. Even if the show couldn't find props other than supermarket hybrids, are we supposed to believe all the other members of this small town orchid society were hybridizing their own collections? Monroe himself took a Phalaenopsis follet to the show, a well-known established complex hybrid. Not to mention that growing your own orchids from seed requires a lab, even if you outsource it. The detectives go talk to the professor again to identify a burned orchid they found in Madeline's incinerator. After waxing poetic about the sexiness of Phalaenopsis, she identifies it as a hybrid, the Bardo Rose. This happens to be one of the earliest Australian dendrobium hybrids. The show seems to have picked this particular orchid for its name. 
because now our detectives suspect that Harry Rose, the handyman, to be Madeline's secret lover. The detective also asks the professor about this obsession with orchids that he is finding difficult to understand. And that is obviously not Paphiopedalum sandrianum. And what's weirder, later on the show, they do show an actual sandrianum, and those are not easy to come by. We actually talked about the testicle origin of the name Orchid in one of our Orchid history videos, so you should check those out. I don't know about Notorious Orchid Smuggler, but the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species is a thing. It's the sits that we see all the time mentioned when it comes to imported plants. Henry's death is also ruled a murder. And while our detectives are accusing the handyman of sleeping with every woman in town, the current keeper of the yellow rod, Monroe, gets seriously forked. And there goes our poor mottled leaf Rochellianum, out of his grey supermarket pot. I guess you don't become butler rich by wasting money on orchid pots. Well, we actually also save the grey supermarket pots to use for other plants. Mrs. Hilliard, had your husband recently acquired a new orchid? Like his father and his grandfather before him. He was addicted to orchids as others are addicted to drugs. They were his passion. But for this deadly orchid, this orchis fatalis, the price proved too high, even for Monroe. Again, the show mentions this concept of orchids as an addiction. Mrs. Hilliard, have you any idea where the orchid came from? I never asked. Would your husband have bought the orchid if he'd known it was illegally imported into this country? He was a conservationist. Through the priest's translations, the detectives discover that another of Madeline's lover was the professor's assistant, Jonathan Makepeace. He admits to sleeping with her to find out about her smuggling ring, and that this was the professor's idea. Do you think Jonathan Makepeace had anything to do with her death? No, of course not. He's a botanist, not a murderer. I should have brought my suspicions about Madeline's smuggling activities to you, shouldn't I? The prospect of cracking an international smuggling ring, of watching the culprits being brought to justice, of being hailed as the saviour of orchid habitats in remote corners of the world, uh, clouded my judgment. Mrs. 
it is now revealed that Monroe paid £175,000 to Henry's widow for the orchid. Holy crap, that thing appreciates in value quickly. <laughs> They also interview Jimmy Fong. That seems to be a poacher that doesn't understand the consequences of poaching. I have devoted all my life to saving threatened orchids from extinction. That's a new slant on it. From here on out, we will be discussing who the killer is. So consider this your spoiler warning if you're still planning on watching the episode. They move on to Henry's widow. She also admits to destroying her husband's collection with a nice spray of sulfuric acid. Which honestly seems like a dramatic and very dangerous activity. Harry the Andyman remembers seeing the professor's bicycle. Why would the murderer leave a bike behind is beyond me. See, they had an actual Sundarianum, or at least a plant that looks a lot like it, on set. And it's the same character that before called an American hybrid a Sundarianum. The professor says she had lent her bicycle to her assistant, who is then caught red-handed trying to plant the yellow roth in one of the faculty's greenhouses. It looks like the same prop they used before for the yellow roth, but somehow now it has the leaves of a Phalaenopsis. It really is a very unique plant. After attempting murder through shovel this time, Jonathan runs away rather ineffectively. and ends up confessing. Apparently he murdered Madeline for not marrying him and sharing her smuggling knowledge with him, I guess. After throwing the dendrobium flowers, he killed her in a fit of rage by well, b by dribbling hemlock in her mouth, that she refused to spit out, it seems. Before dying, she does share with him that Henry Plummer is the buyer for the orchid. When he gets there, Henry's collection is destroyed and the yellow rod gone, all by his wife's hand. But Henry accuses Jonathan, who must have developed a taste for murder, and kills him as well. And moves on to the orchid most recent owner, Monroe. He's not breeding from it, but I thought real orchid collectors grow their own orchids, don't just buy them. Real orchid growers, but he bought his plants rather than grow them himself.
I also thought from the beginning this would be the smart thing to do with a new unique orchid. Sell it to a lab that can make a lot of money introducing a new orchid into the market. But unlike Medline, I don't live in a small village with two orchid collectors willing to pay the price of a house for an orchid. And also I wouldn't smuggle plants from the wild. <laughs> And let's say you give me 200,000 pounds, or I inform the police. Blackmail. He was a conservationist. So Mr. Conservationist did know the plant was illegal. Interesting. Dare you. Get out of here, you bloody upstart. You're not fit to be in the same room as this beautiful plant. We'll see about that. I don't know if it would be like watching a baby, but it is interesting to think what would happen to an orchid in this situation. Who has the ownership of a stolen plant? Apparently the orchid smuggler and the wannabe saver of orchid habitats are now pretty tight. We're going to Mount Kinabalu carry out Madeline's last wish. And what was that? She wanted her ashes scattered as fertilizers on the jungle slope. With luck, she'll help grow unique orchid, which we'll name after her. And that was the twists and turns of Orchis Fatalis, the orchid episode of Midsummer Murders. I have to say, this might be the most orchid-themed TV episode we've ever seen, so we were kind of geeking out. They got a lot of unexpected details right, but as it is usually the case, failed in some really big parts, like the plants changing in between scenes. We didn't end up great fans of the show itself, unfortunately. But we enjoyed this orchid-themed episode and making this video. So we want to thank Fernanda for suggesting it. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions of other pieces of media with orchids, please let us know. And don't forget to leave us a comment telling us what you thought of this episode. You can always subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next week. Goodbye.